Remember the thrill of a good old game of dodgeball during our childhood? But now, let's take that memory and crank it up a notch. Picture this, a team of AI agents honed to perfection, engaging in the ultimate dodgeball showdown. Forget about casual fun or playing with friends, this is all about one thing, winning. These AI agents can hit their targets with pinpoint precision, however, what I aim to showcase in this video is their incredible teamwork, mind-blowing trick shots and a masterclass in how dodgeball should truly be played at its peak level. At least that's what I hope to achieve. It is common practice to create multiple copies of the same training environment to speed up training, since all the agents can learn from each other's experiences if the environment is set up correctly. Even with 15 copies running, I had high stable 200 FPS, which is great news. I color coded the dodgeballs to keep track of which side has activated the ball last and let the training run for 8 million steps overnight and here are the results. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but it was pretty bad for an agent that supposedly trained for so long. For one versus one matchup, this field was quite large, so I thought about making it smaller. Then I trained the agents again and the results weren't really any better. It looked like the agents were performing their best at the start of a round, likely due to the fact that it is this specific position that they have the most experience with, since every round starts the same way. So what if I randomize the starting position of the agents and the balls to feed the neural network more unique experiences to learn from instead? I also added the pop-up texts to better understand when the agents were rewarded or punished to have a more enjoyable viewing experience for both of us, you know? Together with some more bug fixes and minor improvements, the performance of the agents were looking better. Yep. My one gripe with the current state of the agents was that they would often ignore the many dodgeballs on the sides of the field and the other agents couldn't even do anything about that on the other side. So in order to incentivize the agents to keep as many balls as they can on the opposite side, I started rewarding them 0.001 point per frame per ball they had on their side, which I quickly further specified into giving points only for active balls on the other side. So the agents need to keep kicking the balls to the other side to keep earning these gradual rewards. In order to not have crazy reward inflation, I only rewarded the agents for the difference in active balls on each side. Future commentary. In hindsight, this was a stupid decision. Because as I have tinkered with these AI agents, I have learned that it is instrumental to make it as easy as possible for the agents to understand why are they being rewarded or punished. Hit ball, get point. Simple. And this wasn't very simple at all. Anyways, back to the video. I thought maybe completely randomizing the ball's position would help the agents get better at these more diverse situations. But then one of the balls just started disappearing out of the field, so um... So uh, I mean, I could either fix this bug or uh, we can just have some fun, you know? So it's time for... Some agent started spawning out of the field at first. This was as good reason as any to make the field bigger again. I also updated the rewarding structure to be more granular, better rewarding the progress of the agents in a team environment. Now agents lose points per enemy that isn't out at the end of a round, because ideally they should all get knocked out so that one side can win. Future commentary. At the time I loved this approach, then I hate this approach, and then I'll love again at the end. Giving granular rewards is not very clear to the agents, so it's a doozy, you should stick around till the end. The, during training they weren't looking horrible, and the rewards were consistently going up, at least for the first little bit. I needed to do something, this wasn't good enough. How about I just let the agents kick the ball much harder? This idea would hopefully create a more fast paced and exciting gameplay as well. But in order to let them not knock out a whole team with a single kick, I also had to slow down the ball's momentum after a knockout significantly. So let's do a quick check in in what our agents are looking right now. This is the resulting performance after I trained the new and stronger kicking agents overnight. The first knockouts are coming in quick, but then the agents just stop caring. 
To solve this, I changed the rewarding structure to reward more for the later knockouts instead of a flat amount each time. During my analysis, I also realized how much I hate the jittery movement of my agents, which I get that it will always be somewhat jittery due to the random nature of the AI's decision making, but I wanted them to move a bit smoother, like in this demo AI scene by Unity. While I was examining the code, I realized that instead of just setting the speed of the agents manually, they were applying a force, which makes the movement appear more natural. So I also made the same changes, and furthermore, I also added the ability for the agents to rotate. And I did this because otherwise, I don't think the agents of the opposite teams were really learning from each other. Don't believe me? Then how come one team always charges forward and at the same time the other one is running back? It's almost like they are all doing the same movement since it is what's working for them initially. But now, all their movement rotates based on which way they are looking. So ideally, they will learn that they need to look towards wherever they need to go instead of just hitting a specific key. Future commentary, this was a great decision, it kicked ass, it severely improved my results. Back to the video. After almost a full day of training, 11 million training steps later, this was the resulting performance of the agents. Oh well, uh, they are still not really performing that well and I want to increase their performance so as I got more desperate to create a better simulation I tried making the runs longer, giving points for being too close to the center, removing giving points for being close to the center because that was a stupid band-aid solution, fidgeting with the reward values, changing the rewards for hitting balls, punishing teams for inactive balls on their side, scaling rewards such that knockouts and hitting balls are rewarded more in the beginning completely restarting the round and punishing agents if no ball has moved for 10 seconds. I mean, honestly the last two changes actually worked quite well. Here are the agents performing with those two changes. I mean, the agents look alright, but it's time to have some fun with this. I think the fact that the agents get stuck in the middle and can't cross is really boring. I know that's how dodgeball works, but why not for fun and for smoother gameplay we just remove that blockage anyways. With this change, I also had to remove the territory based rewards since now everybody can go anywhere, so that really didn't make sense anymore. At the start of training, the agents were just stuck at this local optima for some reason for 2 million steps. Future commentary. Imagine this as the plot of things that the agents can do and what they are rewarded for. But in the y axis, the lower is the better score. They start at different points randomly and update their sort of actions, optimizing to reach the minimum level of the function over time. Sometimes the agents fall into these point pitfalls, which was kind of due to my bad reward design, or it can be due to a bug or something where the agents just stop learning properly, but basically, this is called getting stuck in a local optima. I'd say the odds that a multi-billion dollar corporation with thousands of employees having a bug in open source framework used by tens of thousands of people is about the same as likely as me having a bug, right? Anyways, back to the topic. I just started a fresh training run and it ended up working out actually. This was the resulting performance of the agents. What if we go another step deeper into experimentation, like completely remove the points earned for ball control. Just simply reward for hitting the balls, knockouts and winning. Go back to the good old days of the training, you know? And then the training got stuck again, restarting it fixed it again, but the agents were still kinda acting slow. I wanted to reward the cooler combos between the agents more. After all, that is what we were after when we started this mission, right? So I changed some of the individual's rewards to be more group driven. Now knockouts give half the value to the rest of the team, hitting the ball already controlled by your team still gives some points instead of no points so that it makes sense for the agents to have combos. Future commentary. This was also a stupid and frankly a pointless change. It's because I was using the special POCA algorithm which is designed with teamwork in mind where you don't need to reward the whole team. The agents already work towards maximizing each other's rewards regardless. Then the training was stuck again, then I restarted again and it worked out again. So after training, they still were looking that good. 
to be honest. Okay, it is time to talk about the single biggest set of changes I made in this dodgeball series. This is the beginning of the end folks, where it all comes together. One big difference compared to my previous AI adventures was the sheer amount of observations that I was passing to the agents in the simulation. In this context, an observation is a piece of data passed to an agent on each frame. The agents use all these observations it receives to come up with a decision to make. In the previous videos, an agent was just observing a couple of things, like the position of themselves, the position of the ball, the position of the goal. But now, in this teamwork AI environment, they had almost 70 observations for 8 players, 4 balls, all of their positions and their speeds, etc. So I started to do some reading, trying to understand if I can improve this system. That is when I learned that the agents don't really like it when the observations have different scales. And God knows my observations did have that. Some of my observations were between 0 and 1, whereas others were between negative 20 to 20. So I applied some fancy maths to normalize these values. Instead of passing in the raw position of every other agent, I started getting the difference in position with respect to the observing agent. This is because technically, the agent doesn't need to necessarily know its own position, it just needs to know where everything else is with respect to its position. Furthermore, I also scaled this vector down based on the largest distance it could be. This way, all the values would always be between negative 1 and 1. Additionally, instead of taking the velocity of all the objects, which didn't really work properly, I instead opted in to using stacked observation vectors. So what are stacked observation vectors, you ask? The value is set to 1 by default, which means the agents will collect their observations, make their prediction and move on. If you set the stacked vectors to n, now the previous n steps of observations will be used to make their movement predictions. If you think about it, what is velocity but just change of position over two time points anyways? At least that was my copium that the AI will be able to understand that. Future commentary. This is indeed how it works, but it turns out it is still better to directly pass the speed components. This is because having stacked observations is like doubling the amount of them, which severely increases the amount of calculations needed, which slows down the training and causes your FPS to plummet. But anyways, after the training was done, I placed the new neural networks into the demo agents again, but it didn't work properly this time. And that was actually great news. That is because the demo map was rotated by 90 degrees for some reason. So now, for these agents, going forward meant going to the right. So think about it. Because of the new vectors, which are more relative to their own positions, they care about which direction they are looking at. So after I fixed that, it was actually not looking that bad. You might notice that the agents were just running into the battle where most get knocked out instantly. Which is not bad, that is by design, they get rewarded more for earlier knockouts and I like the fast paced gameplay. But I also wanted to see some more strategy out of them. I noticed overall they were playing very aggressive because they were being punished much less for getting knocked out compared to how much they get rewarded for knocking someone out. So I severely increased the punishment for being knocked out and started training again. You can see that it was going much better where the agents just stopped blindly running into the balls at the start of every round and instead they started to be more strategic. I still thought that the current way of observing the surroundings wasn't good enough. I initially stumbled upon this while I was doing my reading but I was kinda too scared to implement this because I thought it would take too long but I knew I had to do it. In the Unity's demo scene, I saw that the agents were using this ray perception component. It just easily works out of the box, you just attach the component to your agent so I just did that and let the agents train. Instead of manually passing them the things that they need to observe, you just let them observe their surroundings with a set of rays. The results afterwards were actually not bad. But even during the training of the first generation, I had already realized some huge oversights by me. Like it's great that it can detect objects, but how does it know what objects are? Can it tell between a ball and a player? Turns out, you can just pass a set of detectable tags to the ray sensor, so I just tagged every object correctly and passed those tags to the sensor. The agents were running into the enemy dodgeballs like a bunch of dumbasses and I think I know why. I only had a dodgeball tag, so they could never really tell if a dodgeball was activated by the enemy player or not. So I added team colored tags for the dodgeballs 
so the ray perception sensors could be aware of them as well. So when a ball was activated by a particular team, their tags would also change to reflect that. And those agents were actually working out quite well. Perhaps this next change will make the simulation less realistic, but come on, it's been weeks and we have left that realism station long ago. I just wanna see how good these agents can really get. Now they can see in all angles all the time, not only where they look towards. These extra rays came with a big cost to my FPS too, but anything for my viewers, right? Also I just realized they know what team every other agent belongs to other than themselves. So I had to add a single manual observation, a boolean for which team they belong to. I was feeling pretty good about this iteration, so I let it run overnight and after 7.6 million training steps, this is what we got. This was sensational to watch. I have never seen the agents have such precise movements. Not buzzing around in the field, but they're always charging one way or another with intention. Another unique part about this generation was the amount of ball control. I have never realized this, but with the middle wall being removed, there is really nothing stopping a team from completely dominating the game by activating every single ball each time and just keeping them active. It was great to see the agents so focused on the ball control over the field, but I had one last trick in me. I wanted to see them play with a bigger focus on knockouts, so I reduced the rewards for hitting the dodgeballs by half. And even at a couple million steps of training, these agents were performing really well, but I couldn't help but contain my excitement even when I was recording the demonstration. Because this got me thinking, if these agents are performing so well, do I even need any of these mini rewards at all? Can I make the simplest rewarding structure possible? Literally just reward a point for a knockout and reward a negative point for being knocked out. And if the game ends in a draw, every player is punished by half a point. And would you believe that this generation was also working out incredibly well? At only 2 million training steps, the movements were already polished. It was surprising to see that they still had a huge emphasis on dodgeball control even when they had no incentive to kick the ball at all. Please comment below what I should train the AI agents to try out next. Thanks for watching.